Look at it. There it is. Look at it. It's going. That is awesome. Oh, that, oh, that windshield. That, Tyler, that windshield. <laughs> oh, that hood. <laughs> Tyler, look at it. That's not bad. It's not bad at all. So if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. And if you do, consider subscribing. Today's gonna be a different kind of day. I'm actually not in Florida, even though it really does feel like Florida. It's like 100 degrees. I'm in Kansas, and I'm standing in front of my brand new car. This is a 2003 or four. I actually don't know what year it is. It's a Range Rover, and I just spent some time taking it out of the ground. Well, not me. A bunch of professionals with professional digging equipment took it out of the ground. Check that out. All right, so that is uh, some very wet ground. Looking very wet. Yeah. Squishy. It's just super compacted, so. I think it's going to require some uh, some manual labor to pull it out. Yeah. Last time with a labor, we had to dig around it a little bit, because it was just kind of suctioned Oop. in there by dirt. We hit we hit pay dirt. It's something. Oh, white. There oh, there it is. There she is. Yep. Uh. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. Caught a little bit of it. Uh, yeah, that's that looks uh, collapsed a little bit. That 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 does. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> so if I take this to the dealership, what do you think they'll say? Carmax? <laughs> no, I'll take it to the Range Rover dealership. Oh, for a... Yeah, I'd be like, uh, can you assess this? Can you uh... check engine lights on? Yeah, check. It. I don't know what it's for. That all came from the car that's buried underneath there. It's gonna be interesting. Oh, there goes some water. Hey. There we go. Hey, there's a car, and the the mirror is still intact. There we go. That is coming out of. <laughs> Look where it's coming out. That's coming out of the engine bay. Dude, there is a showroom quality example behind that dirt. I'm telling you, dude. Look, that's not that bad. Oh my God. Look at that. The water pouring out of the wheels. It's like unearthing a mummy's tomb. Check it out. It's, it doesn't actually look all that bad. The tires are still holding air and the paint's looking the same color. I mean, this car, other than the electrical issues and the mechanical issues and the cosmetic issues, it's, a, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good car. What do you think? Like a phoenix rising from the ashes. Yeah. We have a Range Rover. Look at it! There it is! Look at it! It's going! That is awesome! Oh, that, oh, that windshield. That, Tyler, that windshield. <laughs> oh, that hood! <laughs> Tyler, look at it. Okay, well, there you go. That's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's like it has dead air springs, but it was converted into normal coils. <laughs> yeah, I've never never seen that happen before. Honestly, I think just a, a, a nice trip down the road and she'll be fine. Yeah. This is, this is, not, this is not a problem. You wanna, okay, I'm gonna stand back up for that one. You go ahead. Oh, that's it. It's not. That's actually not that bad. The key's still in it. And it doesn't smell, doesn't smell horrible. No. I don't think the poop water got in here. No. I think that was just mixing with the mud. Dude, this might be okay. I'm gonna attempt this back here. Yep. So it did cave in a little bit, the ceiling, but. A little bit, I mean, we had a lot of headroom 
You know, in the car, it's just a little less. It's not, it's not that big of a deal. Dude, this car was really clean. Why, why'd you, why'd you bury it? It was totaled. It was mechanically totaled. I said like all the Range Rovers to sell the yard. They look great. Okay, so the windshield will definitely need to be uh, addressed. Yeah. But uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if she has, oh, there's that poop water. There's that poop smell. And, dude, this engine bay is mint. Look at it. Yeah. That is not that bad. There's a, there's a ton of dirt just like caked in. I'm willing to bet that this will fire right up. What do you think? Yeah. But all that is in the past and now I have to look towards the future because this car, I'm gonna try to get running. Now, I don't promise anything. I don't know if I actually can get this running. I'm just gonna try. And the reason why I'm here is because my friend lives here and this is his car. Well, now it's my car, but hey, you guys, you guys know this guy. This is Tyler Hoover from Hoovy's Garage. Merch link in bio. <laughs> this is your car. Why, 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 why'd you do this, dude? Well, it was mechanically totaled. So now it's, it's total totaled. Total totaled. So it's a beautiful Range Rover, or once upon a time it was, but it needed probably $8,000 worth of work to be running and driving again. And then it would be only worth about three or $4,000 once you did that. So there was, it was no point. I could have jumped it, but burying it seemed like a much better idea. So right off the bat, we can see that the windshield is caved in, the back glass is caved in. It's been raining a lot here, right? Right, yeah, it's record rain, and unfortunately, that record rain all got inside of the Range Rover, but it ran when parked. First thing is first, and that is getting all this dirt and mud well, for the most part, off the car. And the only thing we have is a little little garden hose. We don't even have a pressure washer. This is literally in the middle of nowhere. We just have a garden hose and uh, we're, we're just gonna, we're just gonna do the thing. We're just gonna do it and it's it's gonna get clean. I really don't know, I, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Everyone and welcome to day two of the Range Rover restoration and I think I have some bad news for you guys um, I'm not quite sure this is gonna run for a few reasons number one I mean just just look at it doesn't exactly look as good as it did when it came off the factory floor but um, 
right here is one of the biggest issues. The suspension is completely, completely shot. This is collapsed. I don't know whether it's uh, just something that went through the floor or the springs broke or whatever. I haven't been able to get underneath it, but this has been converted to springs. It doesn't have the airbag system. Usually these have airbags. Now, this is really bad because although I can compress this a little bit, this does go up and down. This is basically hitting the bump stops and I wouldn't be able to drive this in any case. Now, the interior is a different story. We left it out to dry a little bit because it has been like 100 degrees and the interior is just, it's ugh. It smells like, it smells like a public bathroom in here. It smells horrible. So I'm gonna try to clean this up and uh, get this looking a little bit better and hopefully not as bacteria infested. But uh, the water, you can see the water line actually went right up here. It's, uh, there's water inside the gauge cluster, which means that every single piece of electronics has been flooded. Uh, I do wanna put some 12 volts uh, to the battery, so I wanna see if anything lights up or we just get a massive short and it catches on fire, but I wanna see what happens. However, I don't have any sort of confidence that any of this is gonna work ever again. And if we look in here, I did a little bit of cleaning up with the power washer, but you can still see it's, uh, yeah, it's it's really, really dirty. This was covered, covered in mud. And I took this off and you can see that it is uh, very, very wet in there. And it's basically gotten like sandblasted with dirt, dirt blasted. I don't even know if that's a thing, but uh, this engine definitely has water in it because if you take out the dipstick, you can clearly see some milkshakey goodness right there. There is some, a little bit of oil in there, but uh, there's a lot of water, and that's what it looks like when water and oil mix. Now, I can take all the oil out and all the water out and then put fresh oil in there and then uh, take out all the spark plugs and then see if it cranks over, and I might do that. But what I'm thinking is if I have to drive this, especially like on the highway or something, this is really, really dangerous. Now, this is where all the uh, computers and ECUs sit, and I'm thinking that yeah, this was not exactly watertight. This uh, this kind of ballooned out a little bit over here. So I'm willing to bet that this is full of water. Oh, also the gas tank. Uh, the gas tank is not sealed. Usually they are vented. And since the water came up to here, the gas tank is 100% full of water. So that would have to be drained because even if I were to crank it over, I'll be putting water directly into the fuel injectors and then that would be going into the engine and then the engine would break because water doesn't go in an engine. This is a masterclass on why not to bury your car if you ever want to drive it again. But right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get the back end of the car up. I wanna get some air in these tires because I think the bead is broken on the other side. And then we're gonna see how it sits. We're gonna go underneath. We're gonna see what's going on there. And then we're gonna see what happens when we put some uh, electricity to it. And also we're gonna clean some of this so I don't uh, have to sit on broken glass literally and then also touch that mold. This is a great idea. So I should probably talk about where I am. I'm in a shop with a ton of really, really cool cars and you might have seen this shop in some other channels on YouTube and that's because this shop belongs to a guy named Car Wizard. Actually, that's not your, that's not your real name or is it? Uh, I go by Car Wizard a lot. Half okay. the time Car Wizard, half the time David. Okay, so you are David, yeah. the Car Wizard. The Car Wizard. And uh, he will be helping with this uh, Range Rover. <laughs> he's going to be doing all the work. No. He's not going to be doing the work, but uh, he's, he's, he's going to help a little bit. What do you think of the Range Rover? I think if we didn't have so much rain here recently in Kansas, it would have been a viable project as far as getting it driving and everything. But the water table came up while it was buried and pretty much decimated the poor thing. Yeah, it was... There had to be like six feet of water in there. It was, yeah, uh, it was, was pretty bad. Yeah, and, then, and it smells really bad. There's still water in there. It's still like there's a puddle on the ground and it's been drying out for a few days. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, what I'm thinking is we can uh, take that forklift over there that you got yep. and uh, we can lift the rear end and we can see what's, what's going on under there. Yeah, take a look at the springs and get the wheels off. Okay, cool. Um, I see you have a, uh, you have one of these. these yeah, I have th one. Th this is This is nice. So, 
Is this, this what it looks like when it's all together? <laughs> We're about 75% done with this. We still have a little bit left to go. But... Yeah, but the 25% 20, always takes 75% of the time. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's, uh, let's go check that thing out. Okay. Safety first. Now it won't go anywhere. Just remember, dude, watch the paint. That's crazy. It's uh, <laughs> it looks like it's lifting your uh, your forklift there. How is that? It's just a car. It's just a six thousand pound automobile. All right, let's see why this is so collapsed on this side. And there we go. <laughs> Oof. Ah. Okay, uh, there's your problem. It completely came off the bead, and there's dirt just packed in there. Uh, this might be might be savable. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have here. Here is a spring conversion, spring and uh, shock or strut. Can't remember which one is which, but uh, this spring, it doesn't look broken, doesn't look cracked or anything. However, I think that with the tons and tons of dirt that I've been on this spring for such a long time, I think this spring just lost all its springiness. I think it, that just became the new normal. You'd need to replace parts because when I put this car on the ground, it is literally just on the ground. It's on, on the bump stops. You can see where the bump stop made contact right there. That's the only suspension that we have in the car right now. Whew, this is a... Uh, this is not a great idea. Burying a car is, uh, is real, real dumb. Let's see if the bead goes back on. There's a lot of water in that tire. There we go. <laughs> that side should go, your side. Ooh. There it goes. All right. Yep, there we go. Look at that. All right. Yeah, that, that wasn't underground for almost a year. Sell it on Craigslist. Yeah, there we go. $100 OBO, I know what I have. No tire kickers. I filled the rear tires up with air, and as you can see, they are holding air just fine except for the fact that they're not holding air at all at least this one's not yeah it's a, it's in real bad shape i think that it didn't either seat on the bead or there's a massive air leak somewhere else but i think if we fill it up we can at least get it rolling a little better actually we got it right in front of the wizard shop here we pulled it with the forklift but this one is holding air sorta sorta kinda so uh that's good so three out of four that's not bad. So what we're gonna do right now is I am going to take out a spark plug and I'm gonna see what's going on in the engine because I borrowed the Wizard's boroscope here. I know you guys love boroscopes on this channel to see what is uh, going on inside the engine. And I don't think we're gonna find anything that's favorable to starting the car. All right, so we're gonna take off this cover. Oh boy. Wow, that is... Uh... That's, uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. That is, that's water. Um, real. <laughs> okay, I don't think we need to see if there's any water in the engine. Actually, we're, we'll, we'll, we'll check it out. In for a penny, in for a pound. Okay, and, ooh, that is one very wet spark plug. Um, it's not rusted, but uh, the fact that the water did not go down at all when I removed the spark plug is not a good sign. That means that there's water all up in this engine. So let's put the boroscope down there and see what it looks like. So for those of you unfamiliar with what a boroscope is, it's this little probe and it has a light and a little camera in here. And you can see me right there. Uh, hello everyone. Yeah, this is gonna be weird. So I'm gonna put this down into the murky depths. Let's see if we can, all right, you can see 
under the sea. It is like the Titanic down there, literally. It is just rust and oil, and you can, you can see right there, it's kicking up a bunch of stuff. So it's rust, oil, and water, and it's all a frothy, disgusting mix, and I can't see anything. So that's the top of the piston I'm hitting right there. And uh, that's that's it. This is this is so far gone. I don't think that there's any cylinder liner left. Uh, and even if it wasn't just completely welded to the piston ring, then I I wouldn't want to move this. Even if I did like 10 oil changes. And to prove to you guys that I'm not just making stuff up, check out this throttle body. Um, yeah, that's a, a startling amount of clay and mud in there. So let me open this up a little bit and. Now we're gonna go in. All right, so the entire thing is coated in mud. Yep, it's it's all wet. You can see the walls are glistening. But since I am a man of my word, I am going to attempt to put 12 volts to this electrical system and see what happens. So a few things can happen. Number one, uh, nothing nothing because uh, all the fuses are blown and that's probably the best thing to happen uh, number two uh, this just turns off my uh, battery box and number three massive fire number four is everything works I don't think that's gonna happen but let's let's just test it out okay that's that turn it on Okay, nothing seemed to have happened. Not seeing that anything's happening right here. Mm, do we have any? No, nothing seems to work. All right, as we thought, the electrical system is completely dead. But the question remains, what can we do with this I mean this used to be a nice car somebody somebody not me paid almost a hundred thousand dollars in today's money for this car and it sort of looks like it I mean if you squint really hard from a thousand feet away but it's it's probably worth saving to the right person if you wanted to maybe make it a convertible or something but this would require tens of thousands of dollars of work and uh, parts and it just isn't worth it. So this is destined for the scrap pile. This isn't even worth what its weight is in junk because all the electronics, all the mechanical components, those are all just destroyed. Maybe you can salvage some of the interior, maybe like a door or two, but even those are super damaged. So there's nothing really on this truck to do, so I do have to junk it. However, I'm not just gonna take it to a junkyard. I have a better idea. So that's why I brought this car out in the middle of nowhere. We are not in Kansas anymore. And no, that wasn't a reference to Wizard of Oz. No, actually, I didn't bring this car out here. It was my friends at Sherpa Auto Transport, and I ship a lot of cars out throughout the years, and it's great to have a very good car shipper. And uh, they actually gave me a discount code. So if you guys want your car shipped, you can go to SherpaAutotransport.com slash Tavarish, and you can get $25 off your very first shipment. This is looking pretty good. I think it's in its element right now. What's, uh... What's 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 going on? What's going on here? What? I'm trying to make the bear talk. He knows something. Okay. You will talk. All right, all right. This. this Are you <laughs> filming right now? Whoa! Hey guys. Hey hey. hey. Uh, so uh, I I I brought you a I, I brought you a gift. Yeah, thank you for that gift. You're the bomb.com. Yeah. So um, well, it, it needs it's a little it needs a little TLC, but uh, I think it's out of gas, so that's why I parked it next to the gas pump. We can we can fix that. We'll just pump it right in there. Yeah. So my, my uh, gas pump looks like it's in as good a condition as your Range Rover. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, we're gonna see if we can actually get this thing uh, running, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got some tools in here. <laughs> okay. Cool. So um, for that video, you're gonna want to check out his channel. Hi, uh, my channel is Demolition Ranch. It's way better than Tavares' channel. Yeah. Just this, kidding. It's not. This it's, is this is not. Uh, you spelled your channel wrong. Yeah, this is just, this is just my militia's name. We're, we're going to Area 51. You guys want to come? 
Okay, so uh, if you guys want to check, <laughs> you guys want to check out his channel, uh, link will be in the description below, and uh, we are going to see what we can do with this thing. But uh, that's that's going to be in a different video. So until next time, this is me reminding you that on cars like this that actually can't get running at all, and you need to do a lot of work to them, you guys need to wrench every day. <laughs>